Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. This is a special presentation of Our Issues, and our focus has been on the not-for-profit Horizon Home Care and Hospice. The U.S. is experiencing a wave of aging population warmly referred to as the silver tsunami. With that said, it's important for individuals to know their options when it comes to resources for their aging loved ones. My guest is Mary Hayner. She's the president and CEO of Horizon Home Care and Hospice. Welcome back, Mary. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And you've been with Horizon Home Care and Hospice since, I believe, 1999. I have. Okay, that's amazing. And <laughs> uh, you actually find the time to write a column specifically about caregiving. Tell us more about that. Well, about three years ago, as an organization, we decided that we should share our expertise with the community. Mm -hmm. And we, it was recommended to me that um, I write a caregiving column, having worked in community care since the day I graduated from college. Um, I have just a little bit of experience <laughs> just a little. about caregiving and working in the community. Mm -hmm. So started with an email care, caregiver um, column for people who subscribed and now probably 20 to 30,000 people see it a week and it's wow. also printed in one newspaper so multiply whatever their subscription rate is um, on that and there's quite a few people that follow us. Yeah, that's awesome because when we talk about the aging population, people have questions and really I'm thinking that you hone in on things that you probably get asked all the time and it's helpful for individuals who are either uh, aging themselves or really trying to make the right decisions for their loved ones. I, I think it helps people look at their situation and normalize what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. and, and caregiving is so difficult. Oh yeah. When you're the primary caregiver for an infant or an adult, it really doesn't matter. It's exhausting. Yeah. The the work is 24/7. Uh, the stress is real. The decision making that you have to do for food or dementia type situations or what do I do with mom who stopped eating or dad who doesn't take his medication or this, that, or the other thing. Mm -hmm. It's much like you have with your, with a small child. It's just that they're older. Yeah. <laughs> and oftentimes your parents. So people struggle quite a bit with caregiving. And Horizon is an organization with a lot of resources and a lot of expertise. Mm -hmm. So we decided to use our expertise and take it to the community and, and not only be a care provider, but a resource and a, a place of information for the community. And people write in with their questions and they're, they're lots of fun. You yeah. know, and it's fun to respond to them. And it, it's really quite effortless to do that for the community. That's awesome. So uh, most importantly, I guess it allows people to realize they're not alone. I think that is the most important yeah. thing, that your situation isn't the only, isn't unique. Mm -hmm. Although every now and then somebody does come up with one that's pretty unique. Yeah, but even well that's, that like, has to make it very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> so how can someone actually uh, read your uh, column? Well, it's available several ways. People subscribe, so they okay. can go to our website and they can subscribe. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's in a newspaper and also um, it's on our Facebook page every Saturday right Perfect. now that's published on Saturday. So there's a variety of ways to access it. Okay, I'll give out the website address again, horizonhomecareandhospice.org. And you have some very uh, important services. Uh, I think that when we think about uh, some elderly people who are unable to do the things that they used to do, especially when it comes to maybe cooking and going to the grocery and things of that nature, you have your Meals on Wheels program where you guys are delivering fresh, wholesome meals five days a week, specializing in not only heart healthy meals, but also <laughs> if someone's diabetic, uh, you've got the low lactose, like the list goes on, so specialty meals that really do help make a difference for individuals each and every day. Yes, this Meals on Wheels program, we actually inherited from Community Memorial Hospital mm -hmm. and have been providing Meals on Wheels in this community for approximately 30 years now, and they're all delivered by volunteers. Wow. 
that's which is really lot. the most amazing thing is that to keep a program going that long, all volunteer run, uh, that that's probably the most important facet. That it's not just our paid employees, but it's the people of this community caring for the people of this community. Mm -hmm. Because without those volunteers delivering all those meals, people would have to pay a lot more. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. just the cost of you know, delivery plus the food, I mean, it would add up. It would, To definitely. far more than it is. You're right, and what's uh, also important is that no one's left behind, so there's no age requirement for Meals on Wheels, which is something that I think is important, but when you talk about- And you can't get them at your house, no. You <laughs> You're not a, no, so there there is a way to qualify individuals. Not though, right? really, but we usually don't deliver them to young, able people. <laughs> that makes a lot Emphasis of sense. Emphasis on the young. Yeah, yeah, but you're <laughs> saying like if there's someone who's in need who may have a disability and they're 50, yeah. they don't have to be 65 in no, order to no. you know take advantage no. of this program. So I think that's awesome. So um, you mentioned something very important. I think volunteers are important to any organization, especially a nonprofit organization. So uh, for someone watching, how in fact can they become a volunteer and help Help with some of the things that you guys do? Well, volunteering is as easy as either picking up the phone, um, chatting with us on our website, mm -hmm. sending an email. People do it, a, reach out a variety of ways, but yeah. it's one phone call is pretty much what it takes to get connected to our volunteer department. And we have um, probably a couple of hundred volunteers in the community providing some amazing services. Yeah, so just like you're always looking for certified nurses, always looking for volunteers. There's you know, there's really never enough. <laughs> never enough. Because the, the demand is so very great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think if nothing else, that has been established through this conversation that, you know, there is a need uh, in the healthcare industry to take care of this aging population, and it's not a bad idea to look into nursing as something you can do for a lifetime, like you said. No, we tsunami of, um, what did you call us, a tsunami of... <laughs> the um, silver tsunami. Oh, the silver tsunami. <laughs> yeah. We are going to put quite a strain on the healthcare system, yeah. and we're hoping that a lot of those individuals just don't retire, mm. because we're going to need them to help care for all of these individuals who are retiring. Well, a lot of people are not aware that uh, you guys also offer free grief counseling. And the truth is, all of us are going to grieve in some form or fashion in our lifetime, whether it's uh, losing a loved one, a pet, maybe a child leaving home, whatever the case may be, you guys are there to help individuals uh, really connect and uh, work through whatever it is they're dealing with. Absolutely. We started, we opened a walk-in grief center about oh, 15 years ago mm -hmm. now, and our goal was to help the, human, the community heal in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes we look at mental health as an after the fact when you have developed depression or you have, you know, some serious issues that aren't resolved. Grief is a normal phenomena, but it can devastate people. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to help the community heal in a safe way and to make those services available to everyone in their time of need. And as you said, Andrea, everyone will grieve, be it the loss of their pet mm -hmm. or their mom or their spouse. We see over 5,000 people a year in that grief center. So. Yeah. The demand is great. Yeah, and people even grieve over failed relationships. So oh, absolutely. really whatever you know, people are dealing with, it's awesome to know that you're there to help. So you offer counseling, groups, a library, a newsletter, seminars, all types of yes. things. So uh, is all of this free of charge? Believe it or not, it's all free. Wow. We fundraise to operate the center, mm -hmm. so it isn't, it isn't um, part of our core business, mm -hmm. but because of our expertise, much like the caregiver news column, or the caregiver column, the grief center is giving the community 
a resource that we have, mm -hmm. that we are experts at. Yeah, and it's important to mention that Horizon Home Care and Hospice also participates in the We Honor Veterans Program. Yes. And I really just want, as we wrap things up, if you could, uh, what steps would one take in order to find out, you know, uh, how they could go about paying for the programs and services that you offer or if they qualify with their insurance or whatever the situation, what do they need to do? Well, healthcare, as you know, is pretty complex. Absolutely. And we do have a large department of intake staff mm -hmm. who can advise you just over the phone what is covered and what isn't covered. Um, when you are a provider, a home health agency, for instance, you are obligated to know and tell people upfront what their liability might be. Mm -hmm. So it's not a surprise uh, for individuals receiving home care services. They know in advance of receiving services what's covered by their insurance, what isn't covered, and what their potential liability is. It's actually mandated for home care agencies to do that. Mm -hmm. So we keep on staff every day expertise in the office to answer those calls when people ask. So it's pretty easy to get that information at right down to cost per visit okay. for every individual. Well, thank you for that. And we've got just about a minute. Is there anything you wanted to mention as we wrap up the show? Oh, I'd love for everyone, in the, every nurse and every therapist and every <laughs> CNA in the community to think about Horizon and to think about home care or hospice as a chosen career if they really want to make a difference in this town. Okay, well, I really appreciate <laughs> you coming by here and given all this great information that I'm sure is really making a difference to someone that's home watching today, so thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do. Mary Hayner is the president and CEO of Horizon Home Care and Hospice. For more information on anything we've discussed, you can give them a call at 414-365-8300 or visit their website at horizonhomecareandhospice.org. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams, as always. Thank you for watching, and I do hope you join us again soon as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a good day. I love going to work every day and caring for my patients. That's when I shine. That's when, you know, the nurse in me really comes out. Horizon Home Care and Hospice is looking for registered nurses, certified nursing assistants, and physical therapists to join its growing family. If you're an organized, driven, and compassionate caregiver, Horizon believes you have what it takes to join their team. It is the best choice you can make for your nursing career. Visit jobs.horizonhch.com and apply today.